What's good? I keep to leave here. And now you know I used to strap your favorite fantasy football player every week and win my matchup. Now this year, I'm gonna break down the game tape so you can win your matchup every week. And all you gotta do is subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get the in-depth analysis first. And while you at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Call to the Booth. We're back with more Call to the Booth, and I know one of the reasons why you guys are gonna wanna come every Friday for our show is that Keeb's gonna help you break down your lineup, make the best decisions whether in DFS and even in season long as well. So here's what we're gonna do. Week one, we're gonna take a look at the lineups here and what Akib is going to uh, help us put together. So how, uh, is there a player that you know that you wanna target right away, Akib? Definitely, definitely. Tommy Brady. You know, okay, we right away. Start it off with Tommy Brady. No, no matter how much he costs, you wanna start it off with Tom Brady. I know this is a new system for him. Uh, uh, the same Bruce Arian system, you know, Bruce Arian's offenses have a lot of down the field shots, you know, so Tommy going to throw that ball down the field, man. He got some big new weapons along with him. So, man, a lot now, of man coverage as well. It's, it's going to be a lot of man coverage. I ain't mean to cut you off, Harrison, but a lot of straight. man coverage as well from New Orleans. So you play man to coverage, you 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 essentially you give up a lot of yards, and I think he'll have two or three touchdowns. So it's gonna be a great coming out party in Tampa for Tommy. At his at his price point, two or three touchdowns could be could be uh, make him pay off very well uh, for people making those decisions. So now uh, I don't know how much you've played. The, obviously, you haven't played DFS before because you were in the league. But right. what a lot of people like to do when it comes to picking their team, they pick a big time running back. And so a lot of people are going to lean on Christian McCaffrey just because it's almost like mm. every every week last week, I mean, every week last year, if you didn't play him, you could have been on the losing side. But then obviously there right. were some times where he didn't pan out. Uh, but I think you're going to lean to go into some other running back choices. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to go my I'm going to go with the guys who's going to get a bunch of carries this week. That's what I want to do. I want to go with the guys who I know who are going to get 20 carries. If I know you're going to get 20 carries like Christian McCaffrey. You're probably going to have a chance to score a touchdown. You're probably going to have a chance to get some yards, you know. So, I say we go Mark Ingram. We go Mark Ingram. His ticket not as high. And uh, he's definitely going to get the rock. He's going against Cleveland Browns defense. They wasn't the best against the run, you know what I'm saying. So, a lot of carries is, is, is going to carry us. At least one of them will be a touchdown. A lot of yards. Let's go Mark Ingram for our first running back. Okay, and who you got in the running back? I, I like that pick a lot because uh, we don't know how much impact J.K. Dobbins is going to have for the Ravens, and right. if the if Vegas is right in terms of the score and the Ravens being, I believe, six and a half point favorites, that means they're going to be carrying the ball a lot towards yeah. the end of the game. Uh, so Mark Ingram definitely a solid choice. Who's your running back two? Uh, my running back two, I'm gonna go Chris Carson. Uh, Chris Carson, man, he he don't get a lot of credit, but he does he do a lot of work for Seattle, man. He do. Some great work for Seattle. He they workhorse, man. They give him the ball. He gonna have 20 plus carries. They gonna give it to him long as he could long as he can receive it. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, the running backs, man, I kind of look and see who's definitely gonna get the ball 20 times this game. And if you get the ball 20 times, man, something good should happen. Okay. So so we got Chris Carson and Mark Ingram as our two running backs, Tom Brady at quarterback. Now, how do you decide? Obviously, earlier in our show, we broke down some of the top matchups of the week. How do you decide what wide receivers you want to focus on and who's the wide receiver that you must have for week one? Must have week one, Michael Thomas, man. He, that's the guy who gets 20 targets a week. You know what I'm saying? So crazy. I think he probably, get, crazy. he probably get the most targets out of any wide out in the league. Drew Brees, absolutely love him. How can you not? The boy catches everything. He, he catch everything you throw to him. So definitely going Michael Thomas for my first receiver pick. Before we go to wide receiver two and wide receiver three, do you think the presence of Emmanuel Sanders uh, obviously will help the Saints offense, but do you think that impacts Michael Thomas's actual production? I don't think it really impacts his production, but I think it definitely helps New Orleans offense. That's why I'm going with uh, Emmanuel Sanders for my number two receiver, man. I oh, think okay. Okay. Drew Brees is going to be excited to have him. If they've been in training camp this long, I know he had a great chance to see Emmanuel Sanders in practice, see how he worked. You fall in love with that work ethic shit. I didn't play quarterback. I played against him at DB, and I fell in love with that work ethic. So he going to fall in love with that work ethic. He going to make sure he throw him the ball. Like, guys who work hard, you want to get him the ball. So he going to find eight, nine targets, seven, eight, nine targets for Emmanuel in there, man. And, and he don't drop nothing. So every 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 
ball thrown to him, it'll be a catch and some yards, hopefully a touchdown. So obviously with the absence of Ted Ginn now, how do you think he actually, obviously he could catch the ball, Emmanuel Sanders is multifaceted, but what type of routes, what type of uh, opportunities do you think he will get? Will he be a deep threat? Will he be somebody, a possession receiver? How do you think he matches out in terms of the type of receptions that he might get in this New Orleans offense? Uh, I think it'll be a kind of mix. It'll be a mix of it'll be a mix of both. He'll catch some some over routes. He'll be, he'll get at that number three receiver. He'll catch some over routes, and uh, he'll definitely he'll catch some deep balls too. Some posts. Uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good mix. It'll be a good mix for him. But uh, New Orleans offense so explosive, man. And, and, and like I said, he catches everything. So a lot of over routes. They run a lot of all go. A lot of three verticals. So he could choose. I can go to tight end. I can go to Emmanuel. I can go to Michael Thomas. Well, Michael Thomas usually back here on the on a single X side by itself. So a lot of deep balls. That'll be most of the manual deep balls that be seam routes. And then, you know, Drew Brees love to throw seam routes. So it could be big, man. It could be a huge year for Emmanuel Sanders with Michael Thomas getting all that attention. So, man, yeah. I like it. So I love how you decided to go against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary. Last year, when I was playing DFS, I routinely attacked the Bucks secondary. <laughs> Obviously, it's a new year. Maybe they're improved, but last year, that's how mm -hmm. they were. And for week one, then you got to kind of go with what we've seen. Definitely. The question is, who are you? I know you're not going to go with another Saints receiver now. What nah. secondary do you want to attack with your third wide receiver slot? Uh, let's attack that Jet secondary, man. I, I'll attack that Jet secondary. Uh, Stephon Diggs. Let's go, Stephon Diggs. Uh, he's the new toy in Buffalo. And that big arm in Buffalo, I, I know he he can't wait to let that thing go 40, 50 yards to Stephon Diggs. So he's going to score a touchdown, man. He's one of the best rock runners in the league. Uh, I don't know who's going to guard him in New York. If they play zone, that would be even better for him. So let's go Stephon Diggs. I look at him to have a big day week one. And he's, pri he's underpriced across the industry. Um, and a lot of that, I think, might come from last year. It was a down year. Uh, I had him on my fantasy team, I know. Uh, Adam Thielen was getting a lot of targets from Kirk Cousins. Yeah. How do you think he meshes? Obviously, he's a big, you know, with a big arm from Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs' ability to get down the field. And you have John Brown there as well. And Dawson Knox started to emerge as a tight end prospect throughout the end of the end of last year. How do you Definitely. think Stephon Diggs, how do you think actually Josh Allen performs with this new offense? Obviously, a lot of momentum the Bills were getting, uh, were building last year towards the end of the year before eventually bowing out. Uh, how do you think they actually perform as an offensive unit? Do are there players that you is it, you want to buy in this unit offensively? Yeah, I think I think they're gonna be all right, man. I think the confidence throughout the building is going to be second to none, just because Tom Tom Brady left town, so the division is wide open. I think guys are having their most, like I said, COVID nineteen kind of you know put a halt to the off season, but individually, I think guys really really are confident and. and and they opportunity to win a division this year. So the Dolphins, Buffalo, and the Jets, I think guys are really are really confident that they could be the ones that really take the throne in the division, you know what I'm saying? So I think Josh Allen, man, he got a new weapon. He got John Brown. He got some speed on that side. He got his route runner with some speed on this side. Like you said, he got a tight end. Knox, who's doing something, man. I think I think Josh Allen going to have a, a – a, he going to turn the corner a little bit, and he going to separate himself from some of these young guys this year. Speaking of, speaking of tight ends, it's probably one of the most uh, annoying positions to pick from a fantasy football standpoint. Mm -hmm. Unless you got Kelsey, uh, unless you got one of the top tier uh, tight ends, you never really know what, it's a, it's a hit or miss proposition. Uh, right. But thankfully for a lot of people, there is a new tight end back in the mix who we know has proven work. Uh, yes, sir. I know you might also fill that flex position with the tight end as well, which is a unique approach. Who do you got for the tight end and the flex position? For the tight end, I'm going to go Gronk. For the flex, I'm going to go Andrews. Gronk, Andrews, Andrews, Mark Andrews, all he do is score a touchdown. So, man, you got to get him on your team. He's going to score a touchdown. He's going to score a bunch of touchdowns for you. Uh, that run game is so crazy, man. Guys' eyes get lost. Mark Andrews running free down the field, and he catches everything. So, definitely want to get him on your team. And then uh, – uh, Big Gronk is going against a bunch of man coverage this week against New Orleans. Uh, uh, Tom Brady with a chip on his shoulder. If things go left and, and, and Tom like, shit, 
I need somebody to throw the ball to. It's going to be Gronk. That's the guy he know well. That's the guy he's comfortable with, man. In the red zone, he's definitely going to look for Gronk. So those two guys, man, they're going to put some points on the board for you. Okay, so we got Tom Brady, Mark Ingram, Chris Carson, Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Diggs, Rob Gronkowski, Mark Andrews, and all you need to do now is pick a defense. Paul, can you tell us? Let's look. Let's run through the screen here. Let's see what defensive options we have. We got the Minnesota Vikings. We got the Chargers. We got the Saints. Seattle Seahawks. Packers. Jets. Harrison, I think I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Chargers, Harrison. I'm gonna go with one of my no-fly zone defenses. I got one of the one of the originators of the no-fly zone over there. My little brother Chris Harris. Uh, you partner him with uh with uh what's my other corner? Uh, Casey Hayward. Casey Hayward, man. You partner him yeah, with and, Casey Hayward and, and Desmond King. Put Desmond King, bring him down, man, in that slot. So <clears throat> I think these guys will be good. And on top of that, they're going against a rookie quarterback. Now this is not your ordinary rookie quarterback. He's a he's a first round pick, first number one overall pick, but. Still a rookie. These guys got a mean pass rush coming. They got linebackers. They got D tackles. It's a stacked defense, man. And uh, they have veteran defense as well. So I think they're gonna be prepared. And uh it's gonna be a it's gonna be a rough one. It's gonna be a rough one for our number one overall pick. And as you alluded to, it's a veteran defensive unit. And they also have familiarity with Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor Zach obviously with the Rams, now head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. The Chargers are going to be very familiar with the operations. Obviously, what they have now in Cincinnati is different. They're going to hope to have better offensive line play, but even with just a new quarterback, a healthy A.J. Green, who should be available right. for week one, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, who just got the bag. Uh, they do have a potent offensive attack, potentially, but if there's one team that would be familiar with them because of their head coach, it is the Chargers. So let's run this one through one more time. Tom Brady, Mark Ingram, Chris Carson, Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Dix, Rob Gronkowski, Mark Andrews, and the Los Angeles Chargers as defense. That's Akeem's A-plus lineup for week one. You like that? I think that worked out well. I think that was a good... I think good... that's it, man. We, got, think... we, we, we still got $100 left. You know what I'm saying? We still got money left, man. We <laughs> shopped on a budget this week. You know uh, indeed. So, <laughs> so make sure Save you guys... It. Go ahead. Make sure you guys tune in. Uh, every week, we're going to give you those DFS lineup breakdown. Not just We're not just going to give you the lineup. We're going to give you the thought process into making all those decisions so you can just get a smidgen, just a smidgen of all the knowledge that Akeem has in that football mind of his. But before we go, we say and we bid you guys adieu, and we wish you a, a happy football Sunday. Akeem, it's going to be your first football Sunday, not putting on a uniform, not getting, oh. not getting swaggy. You know, are you gonna? I, I, what do? You, how's the setup? What are you gonna do? How, how do you anticipate feeling uh, come Sunday? Uh, if I'm not working, if I'm not working, like I said, my agent is busy, so <laughs> I may be working. I may be in somebody's booth. I may be working, but if I'm not working, I'm gonna get my ass up in the morning, Harrison, like it's game day. I'm gonna take a shower, put a couple <laughs> chains on. I'm gonna go in that theater room. I got a nice little TV set up in there right here. So I got two TVs here. I got the big theater. I'm going to watch three games at a time, Harrison. I'm going to put them all, top three games on. I'm going to watch three games at a time like a real fan. Because at the end of the day, I'm a football fan, Harrison. I love the game. I'll be tuned in on Sunday. I can't wait. Okay. Wait, so for me, I'm a Red Zone fan. Like, I love to watch maybe the primetime Sunday night football game or the Monday yeah. night football game or the late, the later afternoon game on – uh, on Sunday, but when it comes to the beginning on Sunday, I love the idea of just jumping from game to game to game to yeah. game, especially during that during that last fourth quarter, the fourth quarter, beginning of the last games, when all those games are coming to an end in that 1 p.m. Eastern window. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's some of the best TV out there, if not the best TV. Yeah, I know. Um, I know about Red Zone a little bit, so. Yeah, I feel like you might want you might want to you're gonna end up you might end up tuning in at some point. See, look, I'm gonna have I got another TV over here. So Harrison, I got a bunch of TVs upstairs. This is an entertainment slash theater slash a bunch of shit, right? So I had a red zone over here, but in the theater room, I'm gonna have the top three games on. So I already got it set up, Harrison. I hope I'm okay. working, but if I'm not working, me and my kids, man, we'd be tuned in. Hey, hey, the beautiful thing about working in the media, sports media specifically, anytime you're watching a game. You're technically working, uh, so it's it's uh it's got me out of a, it's 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 been a good thing to uh have to do. <laughs> Let me before I start spilling too much tea here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> hope you <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this first or oh, second episode now of Call to the Booth. That's a key to leave. I'm Harrison Sanford. We'll be back next Wednesday, breaking down everything that happened. We'll have an interview potentially. You gotta tune in for that. We'll do a little bit of early breakdown of the key matchups throughout the week. And we'll also discuss all of the major storylines. This is Call to the Booth. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Before we go, a key last word. Call to the Booth, baby. It's my new home. Make sure y'all check us out, man. See you guys next time.